Thank you for that intro. Um, I was thinking it was somebody else was coming up here. So I am a part of the R&D team within the real estate organization. And uh, the one thing I want to say is we do not have the answers. Nothing. We come up with crazy ideas, but we don't have it right. We're trying all the time. And we all in this room learn here together. So at Google, when we start meetings, it's kind of like an icebreaker. Start with a little fun fact. We all get to know each other. This one I did adjust simply based on the uh, Sunday night presentation from Kevin. The first album you bought, right? It's always fun, like for yourself. And this is mine and it ties back. Meatloaf, Bad Out of Hell, my first vinyl record. The mission statement for the real estate organization is that we deliver spaces and experiences that allow Google to thrive. And that's more important than ever before. We're also in the R&D group looking 10 years ahead. So at some point, I think we're all gonna start stop saying transition to hybrid, future work. It's just gonna be, this is our new workplace. Um, in some of the earlier discussions we've had, talked about what do we want, what do people need? Ask, start with that question first. And I think about, you hear some companies saying, mandatory, gotta come into the office five days a week. Um, at Google, what I have found is I choose to go to the office. Nobody's telling me to do it. Uh, so like, I'm gonna come in here, Josh Brady, with whom I worked, didn't expect to know he was coming here. But I'm using this as an example because when I saw him, my first reaction was to smile. I was like, so, I was I'm so pleased to see him. That's the experience that we generally wanna have, right? Every day we go, you walk through the front door in your house, see your kids, your family, you're like, oh, this is great. What if you have that experience to go to the office? So we start with, at the R&D for the Bell Environment, working with our UX team, our user experience team, internally, workplace, really try to understand what it is the user needs. And we're always trying to innovate. And this skeleton, this T-Rex is on our campus as a symbol of innovate or die kind of thing or go extinct. So we're always pushing this forward. Within the R&D lab, our mission statement is to create scalable innovations for the future of workplace. So we'll, we'll prototype, we'll pilot, and then figure out how to launch and take it across our 800 buildings globally. My job is I get to play with Legos, right? We're inventing the Lego kit. And I really get to enjoy that. It's just at Google, we have slightly bigger Legos. So what we're always doing is, especially today, is exploring these connections. And we're trying to identify what is it we are trying to solve. Instead of saying, hey, we're, we're gonna do desks this way, go use it, it's start with the end user, what works for you, and then we design around that. We design from the inside out. So this user journey is really what, what drives us. And this was developed, this summary here, was in conjunction with our user experience based on going out and interviewing a lot of our people. Pride of place is a big thing. You're excited to come into work. We have found it also makes us more productive. If you're inspired, you're motivated, you're emotionally invested, you wanna to come to work, you are more productive. It provides that physical connection. Technology today is great. We can work from anywhere, but it's also allowed us to be thousands of miles apart. So we're building environments that help bring our connection together and then also provide the physiological needs that we all enjoy as human beings. Why? We're trying to solve the world's biggest problems today in this room. Disclaimer, this is not ours, just there was a generic conference room, but I'm willing to bet every single one of us in this room has been in a room very much like this. There has to be a better way to collaborate and connect. So here's the old office. When I came out of architecture school, it kind of looked like this. Sea of desks. Then we advanced to action, to action office. It was like, you know, 120 degree workstations. Oh, this is great. But again, not very innovative, not very inspiring. Then the tech startups and dot com seems to go back to the old office, just rows of desks. So we need to go find out how are we gonna work today, what works better in today's workplace. So this view here is a drone shot from within our new Bayview campus. And it's a collection of neighborhoods and spaces that we're, we're working in here to, to address a variety of work styles. It's not just the sea of desks, 
It gives you places to be quiet and connect one-on-one -on -one over a call, private quiet time, or with a team space. There's a variety, and this is where it really starts. This is in our space, um, our, our lovely R&D lab. It's kind of a maker's space. A lot of our ideas start here, making models, and then we prototype. And so this, we, we build, you can see it's built out of plywood. We, we try a lot of these. We've talked about failing. How would it be if you were rewarded for failing? So many people are risk adverse because your boss or management's like, no, nah, that's not right. But what if you came up with something crazy and it failed and they said, man, that was awesome. We're gonna go and create new ideas. So then here, again, you can see we tried one in the round, trying to get, figure out this hybrid solution, people distant, giving everybody the same scale and presence in this environment. So that was just one example. And then these individual pods, again, these are mocked up in our own lab, and we test these things out so that you have a team space, like you can see the team table in the foreground here, but then you can go drop into a quiet place. So it's a neighborhood that's a collection of spaces that meets a variety of needs. Um, you know, just like we heard just a minute ago about the neurodiversity. And then you, this was recently published in an article. So then here, this, this Starline product gives everybody that full same scale and presence in talking to each other instead of looking at the little tiny squares. So that was all the connections and the physical piece, and, and that's what we do is we're developing, I'm part of the team developing architectural solutions, but we, we want to take it a little bit further and provide the elevated experience. It's not just the built. So the environment, our goal is to provide joy, well-being, and innovation through that space so that you, again, are inspired when you come through that front door and want to be there to see everybody. We're going to be ambitious, but we're not doing it recklessly. Our UX team and others, we, we are data-driven. We have, we do explore all those metrics. We do go back and then reiterate on what we developed. It's always changing. We're not gonna get it right the first time. We're gonna throw it out there, we're gonna try it, and then come back based on user feedback and try it again. So this is the rendering and the intent here of when Bayview was being designed. At our lower floors is where all of the meeting spaces are, cafes, coffee bars, to really be like the, the, the town square bring people together, give them that connectivity, but then also spaces here where they can then disconnect from others and recharge. Amenities here where it's the casual, all right, not the water cooler conversation, here it's the nice you know, barista conversation, but it's also access to daylight and, and spaces where you can feel like a human being and not just another number at a desk. Beyond that, what we're also doing is building differently. One of the th things I'm really involved in right now is our new buildings going forward, the direction is we're going mass timber. We talked about, Rex yesterday was talking about uh, cortisol levels, the stress, how that affects our health. Mass timbers, there are medical, there is medical data that demonstrates mass timber actually lowers, when you're in a wood building, it actually lowers your cortisol. They had a study where they had a hospital of steel and concrete and one out of mass timber. The people in the mass timber building healed and were released about 15% faster than the people in steel and concrete. So it's a kit of parts and that goes back to the Legos, that's what we're developing. It's sustainable. We are looking at buildings that are going to be there a long time, can they be repurposed? What if they were disassembled? Can you reuse the parts? There is so much in that circularity that, that the mass timber buildings really help solve for, um, as well as just providing a great, wonderful experience. And this is our building that opens later, the end of this year, um, our first mass timber building, just sharing it with you. And we are using this as a benchmark that we're measuring our future buildings against for LCA for efficiency, for cost. The, and so then we're gonna iterate on that. So we have a prototype, then we keep going. This is not going to be 100% correct, but the mass timber building we do a year from now will be even better. So here's just an insight, in, a view inside. The other thing here is the beauty of the wood is we don't have 
to provide coatings. Apologies to Benjamin Moore, I know you're here, sorry. Um, we, we paint maybe the inside of the conference room. So. Anyway, but the, the mass timber again, I mean, how nice would it be to be able to sit in this space, have access to all this daylight, this healthier air, this wonderful environment. Again, you feel inspired and motivated to want to be in a space like this. And then on the sustainability piece, this is the LCA analysis that we did where this building, the total GWP, global warming potential, is a 75% reduction compared to if this was steel and concrete. So again, looking forward, we're always looking 10 years out, 20 years out, how do we build better to then provide spaces like this where people are motivated to want to be together, connect, and enjoy coming through that front door like you do at home. And yes, we have lots of cafeterias and food is a very big motivation. But again, it's these casual conversations where just last week, sitting at the coffee bar in our Chicago office where I'm based out of, we went down, the, the, our global lead for carbon, we, went, we sat there for an hour and went down a rabbit hole and, and wanted to save the world and came out of it with 10 more action items because we were so inspired by each other. So these are just a few things we are doing. We do not have it right. We're going to keep trying. Thankfully, we have a really good Lego kit. And I'm gonna keep getting to, to experiment with those, which is great, and so I'm grateful for having the support of, of our teams. And like I said, Josh Brighty here, who's brilliant and always fun to work with. Um, that's the kind of connection that we really enjoy, and it's from the physical environment that helps us all do better work together. Thank you. Well, wonderful. Guy, we, we have a, some time for some questions. Does anyone want to ask a question at all? Yeah. Uh, you're supposed to make him run. <laughs> I know, I was going to move seats just to do it. Yeah. Um, so thank you, that was really great. Beautiful spaces. Um, the question I'd ask though is, obviously Google has decent budgets to spend and a big teams, a lot of headcount, folks dedicated to roles that, you know, even talking for Twitter, we're 8,000 8, employees. And so we have people covering a lot of different roles, not as many, you know, folks in our teams. We don't have R&D people. So if we were looking at all of the great things you've shown us, what would you recommend are the elements that we could take away? If we couldn't completely recreate all of, you know, because you're doing some amazing things, what are the things that you would say we should focus on? Well, yes, there's a lot of big Legos there. Um, but where we always start is asking our people, what do you want? We're designing from the inside out. So it can be small, it can be big, but it's always starting with that user journey, that slide I put up there. What matters to them? Um, because we all do better together. And, and it's always a collaborative, we say collaborative, but that, that connection, you just, it's almost you can't quantify it. But it's, I think by starting there, it'll let, you can build at any scale at that point, is just really starting with the person and what matters to you. Any other questions? Yeah, we got, okay. Can't see hands up here. <laughs> Wonder how much weight it, Jason loses after one of these. Good morning. Thanks. <laughs> Thanks, Guy. Um, yeah, great, great presentation. Uh, obviously, it's a beautiful space. Um, I guess my question is, I think a lot of people in this room also have beautiful spaces. We might not have as big Legos or as big budgets for creating such amazing spaces. Um, but I think we all put a lot of work into our space and I was wondering what your return to office numbers actually are based on these, these amazing creations and how has that been impacted? It's, if you look at, my, if I'm doing this from memory, if you look at coming in at, you know, every week, not five days a week, but me, if at least one or two days a week, I think we're approaching pre-pandemic levels. I think we're around 70, 80, 78 or 80% of people coming in at least one or two days a week. That's pretty amazing. Thank you. Is that right? Well, <laughs> I have one more. 
Thanks. I have to have a question because I'm a big fan oh, of your work, guys. Uh, okay, what's up? <laughs> uh, no, I love it because the way you presented it, it's not about a competition. It's not about to show your spaces versus anyone's spaces. It's how Google is moving forward and leading a movement. And so I really appreciate it. And I think one question is like, how your team is thinking about building an ecosystem of with architects and construction work like GC and maybe other teams here and thinking through it for the future? Um, there's a lot there. <laughs> it's, you, you're right, it's, we, we do try to be out there and try new things, but we're, I'm here today because I can learn from everyone in this room. I, we don't do it in a vacuum. Um, it's, th there, is, there can be that Google bubble, but by getting out there and talking to all of you here, that's how we learn and are better. Um, and Moser is here and Dale, our group is here. We're working with them. They're helping us be better. So like with Dale, our, like I've, they were working on a building with us on a mass timber design competition. I was looking to them for what new innovative materials are they using. So it's, we don't come up with it just on our own. It is a community effort. Guy, thank you so much. Another round of applause. Thank you. <laughs>